Victor Wimbanyama has already proven he is not human in seven different ways, the first of which is his absurd rookie dominance. We've seen the threes, we've seen the dunks, we've seen the blocks. We have seen a historic rookie season. With over 20 points, 10 rebounds, and three blocks per game, Victor Wimbanyama has put up stats that only three other rookies in NBA history have achieved. Shaq, Alonzo Mourning, and David Robinson. Before this year, Shaq compared Victor to Bol Bol. He's never seen a guy like uh, Wimbanyama. Yes, you have his name is Bo Bo. Are they both black or something? Oh, no. Are you comparing Wemby Yama to Bo Bo? Bo Bo's career high for points in a single game is 26. Wemby has had a rookie season only replicated by three Hall of Famers, and on this list, he is the only player to make a single three-pointer and going even further. Throughout NBA history, only 10 players in general, rookie or not, have put up this stat line in a single season. What's even more amazing is that Wemby became the first player ever, ever, to score 15 100 points, block 250 shots, and make at least 100 three-pointers in one year. No one else in the league has achieved those milestones in a single season. A lot has been made about Victor being the best generational prospect since LeBron. Compared to LeBron, Victor averaged more points per game, more rebounds per game, more blocks, he shot better, he had a better PER, a better VORP, and he had a better box score plus minus. So when comparing Wemby as a prospect and as a rookie to LeBron James, certainly the comparison is there for us to make. The stats do not lie here. Wemby is also the youngest player to ever lead the league in blocks. He led the NBA in stocks. He's the first rookie since Shaq to record a 40 and 20 in a game. Against the Nuggets, he had a ridiculous 17 points in an under three minute span. In a franchise that has had all time bigs in Tim Duncan and David Robinson, Wemby became the first spur ever to have a 40 point, 20 rebound, five assist game. And amazingly, he also had the best step back three point percentage out of every NBA player this year. We also need to remember that Victor does have a developing offensive game, but that also he is the star of the Spurs. He has his name at the top of every scouting report. Teams are focused on stopping him and he still is delivered in a historic way. But what's been most impressive truly is his defense. Wemby is likely to finish second in this year's defensive player of the year voting and has told Rudy Gobert indirectly, I know that Rudy has a very good chance of winning it this year and it would be deserved. Let him win it now because because after that, it's no longer his turn. Love that mindset, and again, the stats tell no lies. Wemby finished this year a fifth in defensive win shares, second in defensive box score plus minus, second in defensive rating, and first in block percentage. Before we continue hyping up Wemby here, I do wanna say we have a new channel, Coors Light, where we just made a video, what if Victor Wembanyama played in Michael Jordan's era? I put Victor Wembanyama in Michael Jordan's era to see, could Wemby overtake the GOAT? Could he ruin the Bulls two separate three peats and even steal some MVPs from Mike and the results were shocking. It would be awesome if you checked out that video. The link is in the description and also subscribe to the new channel for more videos like that. For now, let's continue with this video. He already has the advanced defensive numbers of a star. Everything indicates that he can anchor a high level winner when his roster gets more talent as many thought his weight would be an issue at this young of an age, but it hasn't been. Instead, his eight foot wingspan and instincts have allowed him to generate 3.5 deflections a game near the top of the NBA and his rim defense is in the top 5% of the league as opponents shot 11.1% at the rim versus Wemby compared to the average defender. Any rookie with these stats and normal measurables would already be on the path to stardom. But Victor is a freak of nature. Standing at 7'4", Wemby is not the tallest player we have ever seen. There have been 9 players in NBA history that have measured 7'4 or taller, with Manute Bull and George Morrison clocking in at 7'7". However, Wemby is not just just a giant, he has a measured eight foot wingspan, which has allowed him to become a disruptor at the highest level. True generational prospects change the game. Players have quickly found out that shooting seemingly wide open three pointers are no longer safe if Wemby is around. The man is a three point shot blocking machine. This type of defense is very difficult to play against. We heard Wemby might be immobile or struggle with injuries coming into the NBA, but then we saw the tapes during the off season. We saw that his flexibility is quite frankly remarkable. Looking at the videos of him stretching, we can see exactly why Wemby is able to move gracefully around the court and Damian Lillard put everyone's thoughts into words on the Dan Patrick show. We've always been extremely impressed with Kevin Durant doing it at, you know, 6'11". Now you gotta do 7'5 is doing the same thing. I think Wemby is special and I think um, how competitive he is is what surprised me the most and that's what makes me think that, you know, very soon I can see him being 
best player in the league. The most important clip to me though is this clip from Giannis as players have questioned if Wemby is just seven foot four. So here's what Giannis had to say after playing Wemby for the first time. I've never seen anything like him, seven four, seven five. I don't know how tall he is. He's not seven three. He's way taller than seven three. So whoever say he's seven three, that's a lie. Hearing a league MVP in disbelief after playing Webby is frightening. Giannis seemed like he was legitimately in shock. Players such as Jaron Jackson Jr. have grown over two inches since joining the league. Are we seeing the same thing with Webby? When LeBron and AD first saw him, their reaction was priceless. What's more, unlike other Giants, the flexibility Wemby has has had him allowed to work on his game in very advanced abilities, such as initiating the offense after bringing the ball up or just jumping into isolation situations. He's been used in multiple kind of pick and roll and pick and pop sets as both a scorer and a passer. Victor's versatility is already off the charts. The Spurs are developing him in that way. And as his experience grows, the sky is truly the limit. Watching him, it does make you think, why did Paul George and Draymond Green say Say this before the season. He's elite, <laughs> hell of a talent. But some of the shit that I've seen, he's not, we're not letting him do that. I'm sorry. NBA. You're not just dribbling through me like the Harlem. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wemby did get extreme hate headed into the NBA. The doubt was there, but it's here where he showed in his seven foot four frame, he has Kobe's Mamba mentality. He steps up to the challenge. He lets hate or doubt fuel him. The summer before his final year in France, Wemby's pro league team played the G League Ignite in two matchups that could have been seen as a battle for the number one pick. On one side, we had Wemby. On the other side, we had Scoot Henderson. Tremendous pressure for both, only Victor proved in no uncertain terms that he was ready for any challenge. In game one, Wemby would dominate, scoring 37 points with an offensive arsenal that turned heads as we had never seen anything like this before. Yes, we had dunks. Yes, we had scoring around the basket, but we also had incredible looking threes. We were looking at the unicorn. I didn't like to be called a unicorn. I like being called an alien, yeah. Victor also had five blocks, two directly on Scoot, one on a jump shot and one on a potential dunk attempt, as if he was making his own personal statement and scouts were left shaking their heads at his potential. Game two did see Scoot leave early with a knee injury as Wemby continued to put on a show, scoring 36 points with 11 rebounds and four assists. And with this- Everybody's been a unicorn over the last few years, but he's more like, like an alien. Yeah, he's like the 2K creator player, cheat code type vibes. We gotta get ready for this kid, you know? He's gonna be, he's gonna be really good. That type of talent and skill and he's really in trouble when he comes in to a player who was unready for this kind of pressure this kind of hype from current nba legends would be a lot to walk into this was similar to lebron before he was a rookie being told that if he wasn't a hall of famer he would be a disappointment how does it feel to know that if you're not eventually a first rank hall of famer a lot of people will say you were a bust or overhyped lebron of course stepped up to this challenge Wemby, after being doubted headed into this year has had paul george completely changing his mind watch wow. i take back everything i said <laughs> Some of the stuff he doing, dog, like. While Draymond has also completely flipped in his opinion. A lot. Uh, Wimby should be the defensive player of the year. He's seven four, and can move his feet. I don't know what lab he was created in, but I need to go create me a son in that lab. But where did these skills and mindset come from? Shockingly. Wemby has been this way since he was a child. His dad was a track star. His mom was a six foot three basketball player. His grandfather was a professional basketball player in the top pro league in France and was described as a rugged dunking center. And from the second he could play sports, Victor was putting those genes to good use. He played soccer at a young age as a goalie, which is quite something to think about if he were to have stayed on that path and grown to be seven foot four with an eight foot wingspan guarding a goal. But of course, Wemby did turn to basketball due to his height. Then by by the age of just 14, Wemby played with the U18 Barcelona team in the mini cup and was officially offered to stay with Barcelona, a team that would have tons of resources for him and a team that competes in the Euro League, the second best basketball league in the world, the same league that Luka Doncic came out of. But Wemby told Barcelona no for an extremely interesting reason. He said the coaches were not challenging him or telling him what he was doing wrong. They were hyping him up too much. Quote, this is one of the reasons, but there were others. 
years. I like to progress and I need to challenge myself, so yes, I like to be told things clearly, even if it can be unpleasant to hear. At 14, Victor was already at the point where if you were sucking up to him in any way, you were gone. He wanted to go to a system that was going to challenge him, one that would make him better, one that was going to lead him to his ultimate goals, which is one of the most mature mindsets I've ever heard. There are current NBA players that do not even like to practice, let alone have their coach challenge them at 14. But a lot of rookies look promising and then get caught up in the celebrity lifestyle quickly and bust out. What's scary about Wemby is that he only cares about becoming the greatest player to ever live. You are the best prospect in a generation. Do you feel pressure around that? I try to live free. That just goes in one ear and out the other. There's no pressure from yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, true. No pressure from that. I always remember, I'm free in that universe. I, I do whatever I can. <laughs> Chase is. <laughs> He's reached enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> true enlightenment. Players can talk a lot. They tell us what we want to hear often. But where we see Wemby's true drive, his true dedication, his true mindset is in his improvement. As after taking down Scoot directly, it was a given at that point that Wemby would be the number one pick in the draft. Regardless, he still went out and had an amazing final pro season in France that showed us everything we love to see. What I'm talking about is tremendous growth. From 2022 to 2023, Victor increased his French league averages from 9.4 points, 5.1 rebounds, and 1.8 blocks per game to a league leading 21.6 points, a league leading 10.4 rebounds, and a league leading 3 blocks per game. He was also named the youngest MVP in French league history while winning basically every award that existed in that league. Wemby also led his team to the finals, but it was there where they got swept by a much older and more experienced team. But it's also here where we continue to see the mindset of the ultimate competitor. Despite his individual success, Wemby would apologize to the fans for this loss, saying, I'm sorry for the fans who love to see a show. Of course, I'm proud of what I've managed to do along with my coach in bringing the team to the finals, but I'm not satisfied. After the season, Charles Barkley was still doubting because he didn't believe in the competition Wemby was facing. First of all, the Spurs ain't close to winning no championship, young fella. Y'all probably ain't gonna make the playoffs <laughs> next year. Just cause you getting all this hype and you've been kicking ass in France, that don't mean nothing when he step on the court next year. Probably gonna be the third best team in Texas. Normally, generational prospects do get bullied and elbowed and trash talked. They normally do face what Charles Barkley is saying. They have welcome to the NBA moments, but somehow Victor already has the Michael Jordan rule in place. No trash talk allowed. But it's here where we see another part of Victor's mindset. His favorite thing is winning. Quote, I really, really love winning. It's what I love most in life. We have heard multiple reports of Wemby in the NBA, leaving the court in extreme anger after losses. In France, his teammates claimed he cried after losses because of how much he cared. So we lost. He came in the locker room. You know, I feel like we all play hard. We tried. So he came in the locker room crying. He was just so passionate. Like he gave a speech to tell us like, if y'all don't want to be here, then leave. This mindset can best be summed up in an interview at the All-Star Weekend where Wemby was asked how he felt about the night. A lot of people just have fun during the All-Star Weekend. Wemby responded with, You did good. Your teammates were shooting left-handed though. What are you going to do? yeah. I mean, <laughs> fun is... Victor was not happy that Anthony Edwards made a joke of the event by shooting left-handed. Wemby instead wanted to win to leave his mark on the All-Star Weekend. He's even gone as far as to say this season after a Spurs loss. I'm a competitor, so I'm, I'm, I want to go at everyone and be, be the bad guy on the court. At the end of the day, I'm going to get what I deserve. And it's, you know, every game is a statement from now on. Again, nothing was expected of the Spurs this season. As a team, they were terrible, but those losses ate at Wemby. That finals loss ate at Wemby in France. These are the moments that are pushing him to be truly great, to be transcendent. This mindset to win and to grow and to get better at all costs is something that NBA players, even other NBA stars, are very, very aware of. He's his own player, and his, uh, his enthusiasm for the game is much different than anybody who's ever played. You can try to compare, but he's going to call 
about his own lane. It's truly amazing. I've searched. You can look too. You will find no clips of NBA players getting in Wemby's face and trash talking him. They are already fearing the seven foot four giant. Even guys such as LeBron James are only singing Wemby's praise. Uh, I've all said it from the beginning that he's uh, he's special. He's going to continue to get better and better and better. You know, each and every game, each and every year that he steps on the floor. Jokic, who in the past has made it a point to get physical and to get even with a lot of players, had this to say about Wemby. What was going through your head in the first quarter? He had just blocked your shot. Did you say anything to him after that? Thank you. If you block one more shot, I'm going to... something but he, he blocked like four after that so i didn't do anything about it <laughs> this level of respect among nba players is so so rare for a rookie it's unheard of but looking forward what does this all mean we've heard of generational prospects but victor's rookie year showed us the rarest of rare goat potential. Here is where Victor Wembanyama's rookie season ranks among the absolute best centers to ever play the game in the last several decades. Across the board, Wemby's numbers stand out as just a pure center. He already looks like he is going to be one of the all-time greats. His block percentage particularly jumps off the page. 10% block percentage per 100 possessions is straight up ridiculous. When the Spurs add talent to this roster, his defense is going to shine even more. And that is the plan. Wemby has said, I I'm trying to win your ring ASAP, so Ready. And when compared to recent NBA rookies, we find that again, Victor stands out. Chris Paul had an amazing rookie season that gets overlooked, but other than Chris Paul, Wemby's numbers stand tall with his VORP, PER, box score plus minus, and win shares per 48 minutes setting him apart. Now, of course, out of all of these prospects, Victor also has something that none of the others do, the freak of nature factor that we talked about before. The ability to truly change the game with his height and wingspan and mobility. This season at seven foot four Wemby already made 1.8 three-pointers a game the most three-pointers Dirk Nowitzki one of the best three-point shooting big man ever made in a single season was just 1.9 this season Wemby had 3.9 assists per game as more than Jokic in his rookie season and the most assists Shaq the most dominant center prospect we have ever seen had in a single season in his entire career was just 3.8 the potential for growth is everywhere the signs that Wemby is truly going to change the game are everywhere what is going to be very telling is the difference between year one and year two. True goats make tremendous leaps even after having big time early success as rookies. We did see that with Wemby in France, but the NBA is of course a different story. Here are the differences between Luka, LeBron, and Michael Jordan's first year in the league compared to their second. Third for Mike because he broke his foot in year two. As we can see, all of these players, all of these goats slash goats to possibly be with Luka made astronomical jumps in their stats. And with Victor, we should be expecting the same. We've seen the respect, the fear that his opponents already have for him. Year two with a better roster will show us just how high his true GOAT potential is. But I'm going to guess his sophomore season will be just like his first. It'll be something we have never seen before. So thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications for more videos just like this. And also, we just did a video on Luka Doncic, or if you're more of an Anthony Edwards fan, we just did a video on him as well. Thank you if you're already subscribed. Thank you if you're still here listening to me. You're awesome. We all know it. Have an awesome day and peace.